Hey, Roger, a lot of people are asking, what if it's both? What if it's inflation and a slowdown in demand, stagflation? Do you think that's possible at this point? I think stagflation is the less likely outcome because we start with an economy that has so much forward momentum already. Uh, and you know that is going to change somewhat for sure. We already have a very low unemployment. Uh, the last time we had stagflation, unemployment was relatively high. So I've, I'm hearing that discussion. I think the probability is this is more likely to be uh, an inflationary challenge as opposed to a dramatic drag. The other thing to recognize is, unlike the other times, the U.S. is relatively energy independent, and we are supplying natural liquid, liquefied natural gas to, uh, to Europe. Uh, and so I think some of the drag is maybe a little less than has been historically the case. And it's the inflation, inflation challenge, I think, probably predominates over the uh, stagnation challenge. Hey, Roger, could you put your, your investment, uh, your, your former investment CEO hat on for a moment? Uh, we, we've been watching the markets this morning. Um, they actually looked like they were going to open higher for a moment there. And things then uh, seem to turn around. You've seen uh, gold obviously move up over the past couple of weeks. Crypto actually hasn't moved as high as I would have thought, given if it was supposed to be digital gold. How, how do you think about the markets right now? Look, I think you think about the markets with uh, two hats on, so to speak. One is the short term, where you know there's going to be volatility. You're trying to figure out and get out of the way of anything that looks like it's not going to recover. On the other hand, you recognize that unless this gets much worse, this is a geopolitical crisis that everyone is going to attempt to temper down as best they can. Uh, and so you have to also think about the long term. This is not a time to start making dramatic moves uh, in, in anyone's portfolio. And professional investors, I think, are just trying to figure out, are there any pockets that look like they're not going to recover? And you also know, uh, as a professional, that this market is driven very much by headlines. Uh, there is a meeting uh, going on uh, this morning on the border, I believe, between uh, uh, Ukrainian officials and Russian officials. Whatever that announcement is will drive the next turn in the market. You know, if we discover that, you know, contrary to expectations, a particular bank is heavily exposed uh, to Russia, that will drive the next turn in the market. So this is a market, I think, that is very much driven by headlines, and professionals, I believe, will not lose their head. They will uh, hold onto their portfolios and not try to make any major but, adjustments but, at this stage. But real quick, but broadly speaking, in terms of just the equity market, you know, when I talk to a lot of professional investors, especially hedge fund managers and some of the big institutions, even putting aside the issue of Russia, they were, I don't know, what to say, maybe somewhat even bearish uh, about where the market was going, given this idea that you can't fight the Fed. If you layer right. this situation on top of that, how do you feel? You feel exactly that, that, in fact, there were already pressures that were going to take this market from very high levels down. It has been uh, in close correction territory, and then we saw it bounce back up. So my view is unless you are a short-term trader and needing to do something to show profitability over the next quarter to let it ride as it is, knowing that it's going to certainly go down, and let's expect, hope, and I do believe the Fed will manage to engineer a soft landing, uh, and then the fundamentals will come through. And the fundamentals are, are really very strong in, in most parts of the economy.